Hey, folks. Um, first off, I mentioned this the other night. I, I want to say it again because I thought it was uh, – I really do believe it was a big factor. I want to thank the fans for coming. I know people have been frustrated with the start. Coming off the Weber game, uh, you know, nobody more frustrated than us, but the fans showed up. The students showed up. Uh, I thought we had great energy in the stadium the other night, and our kids fed off of it. That's the that's the hardest and just kind of the most passionate group uh, that we've had, that we've put on the field. It showed especially on defense and special teams, and a lot of our fans stayed till the very end and where we kind of clawed our way back into a 10-point game. It's appreciated. We need it. We need it now. These guys are getting better. And they do feed off the fans, and we have a great home stadium. And I, I, I appreciate folks. So hopefully they'll they'll be back when we play at home in a couple of weeks, and we'll keep improving. Um, secondly, I also want to thank everybody across the valley, but really honestly across the country that partnered with us last week with the uh, mental health uh, awareness initiative. You know, when we decided to do this back in the summer, clearly something that's important to me, but also to, also to our staff and our families and our players. As you saw the testimonials, we didn't know what to expect in terms of response from the Valley, but definitely not nationally. And just the amount of views of uh, the testimonials who put out mine and those of players as well have been just amazing. The responses, texts, emails, letters, you name it, we've gotten in terms of thank yous and and how helpful and supportive those things were, were to people. Uh, it made it very um, aware to us or, or very apparent to us that it was, man, God used it in a big way this week. I know he'll continue to do that. Uh, it was not easy for any of us, but, but um, you know, to find some purpose out of pain, uh, that, that gives you a sense of, you know, God's using it. We're going to continue to partner this week with Helensky's Hope, who came in to speak this season during fall camp. They kick off their mental health. Uh, awareness week next Saturday with us playing on Thursday night. We'll wear ribbons in, in honor of those guys and support them as well. So, uh, and then we'll then we'll move on to other initiatives. But definitely our our thoughts won't change. Uh, to hopefully we, it's not just something we think about once a year or for a week. It's something that we all make more a part of our life and more aware of how we can be supportive and be helpful and encourage those um, uh, year round and, and daily. Beyond that, man, I was uh, I felt like it was our defense's best game of the season, with the exception of a couple breakdowns. We played we played really really well up front. We played with a physical kind of nasty mentality to stop the run and to be able to stop UNLV from running the ball as effectively as they had in previous games was a huge task, and our defense stood up to it. Uh, I know we had one big throw down the sideline where we had a bust, and really, honestly, we just fell down. We had a short field after the punt, uh, the the kneel uh, kneel down punt that that got us in a short field that we we needed to force a field goal. But honestly, they played well enough to, for us to win in almost every area. There's several things we can fix, but if we play with that kind of passion, we play that physical up front, and we'll we'll mix it up in the back end. Then we got a chance to win games as we as we move forward. Special teams, I thought, did a great job with the exception of the the one bad snap and the kneel down, creating a short field. We had a blocked punt. We had several good punt returns. We had another big kickoff return to midfield, and and we covered kicks well. Um, we need to avoid the penalty. We need to avoid the kneel down in that area. Uh, those can be avoided with better execution and 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 really just um, smart play by Jamie. Nance, I mean, he can't he can't afford to get the the penalty there. But we uh, we played really well in special teams. Offensively, more explosives than we've had. We pushed the ball downfield better than we had in previous games. But we are still struggling for consistency. We didn't run the ball particularly well. We definitely did not move the chains on third and fourth and short where we absolutely have to. And then the turnovers, uh, we we can't have turnovers and expect to win games. It's a Surprising that we were still in a 10-point game late with how badly badly we played in terms of turnovers and penalties. So we um, we did improve, albeit not on the record, and, and obviously the scoreboard only showed minimal improvement. Uh, I think without the turnovers, without the penalties, we're, we're in great position to win that game, and that's what's disappointing. Those are self-inflicted mistakes that we have to fix, and um, we, uh, we battled those yesterday. We were very extremely... Uh, transparent in all those areas where we can fix those problems. And hopefully we will take another step forward this week and eliminate mistakes and 
play our best game and find a way to get a win against a really, really good BYU team. Maybe the last time we get a chance to face them ever, which can, which is a lot considering it's been played 90, 91, 92 times. So uh, no better time than now to play our best and eliminate mistakes and, and go get a win. What questions do you have? Trent Wood with Deseret News. You talk a lot about the inability to execute on third and fourth down, especially third and short, fourth and short in that game. I'm curious how much of that was just not being able to execute the plays? Was it play calls that weren't the right play calls? What was going wrong on those short money downs? Well, there's three, there's three that really stick out. We had a third and one where we ran pretty standard inside zone play, and both right guard and center both missed. They moved the front. And we, uh, we didn't respond well to it. We ended up with an unblocked guy right in the gap, and, and he stoned it. So we, ex we didn't execute. The play call is fine. We got numbers for the bodies that are in the box. If we cover those guys up, it's, um, you know, it's a good play. The fourth and two, uh, earlier coming towards the building, we ran a shovel, a little shovel underneath shovel plat pass to uh, Brock Lane. Uh, we got bodies on the right bodies. We're a little deep on our pull, and we're a little deep on the shovel path. I think if we're a little bit more downhill, we need about six more inches to move the chains. Uh, again, we've got numbers. We've got multiple options on that play. If they squeeze, we're going to kick the ball in the perimeter. If they widen, which they did, we're going to shovel it underneath. That same play uh, scored for us in a similar look against UConn. It, uh, it helped us beat uh, Air Force last year in a very similar type setting uh, where we shoveled it underneath the Carson Terrell. This time, you know, we didn't execute it quite, quite as well. Great play, I thought, by the linebacker to really put his face right on uh, the, the, the ball carrier, and, and we just didn't get anything after that. The, the final fourth and two, fourth and two and a half, uh, I, I call it, that's on me. I, I, saw, I sent some, dis, some confusion in terms of our formation and what we're trying to get run. We hard counted them and didn't get a free play. Um, that's, I need to take a time out there. Uh, I, I feel like if we don't have a perfect play with, with more options than just running the ball downhill there, uh, I, I got to take a time out. And so in that sense, I'll take that one. That one's on me. I know Coach Tuck will tell you it's a bad call. I'm going to tell you I should have called the timeout. I was trying to save the timeouts because of where we were in the game. Uh, didn't feel like we were going to get a better look at scoring a touchdown and felt like we got to be able to convert right here, and we, and we didn't. So, um, you yeah, know, I'm going to take that one. Call a timeout, get the right play, maybe even consider a field goal, although field goal is not going not gonna to end it for you. You still got a lot of work left to do. But uh, I need to burn a timeout right there and get us off the field, make sure we got the right play call. Cranston with 106.9, the fan. With those um, short yardage play situations, was there much thought about bringing Levi in as, a, as another option to just get a few extra yards? You know, it wasn't discussed. He's definitely – we have a package with him available. Um, you know, it, it when you look back at the first two plays – Physically, matchup-wise, we got bodies for everybody. Now, he's a big physical guy, and maybe in hindsight we, we would, but have we executed those two plays as we do on a daily basis? Had we covered bodies up, we move the chains on both. The third one, like I said, I need to take a timeout, make sure maybe we talk about putting him on the field then and, and giving ourselves multiple options. Maybe we run our two-point play right there. Maybe we take the field goal. Um, Should have taken a timeout. That falls on my shoulders. Patrick Mayhorn with the Ag Ship. It seems like there are a lot of uh, half field reads in the passing game where you have guys on the other side who just aren't really running routes. What is the what's the benefit of doing that? Well, I'm not sure that's completely accurate. We do that at times. We do isolate some guys at times. Uh, there are times where he can pick a side based off of the look and the grass, and we do that as well. Um, when you play at the tempo we want to play at, and when you run the amount of you know, deep vertical type reads that our wideouts do. There are some times when taking uh, taking another vertical stretch off a guy's legs is going to be helpful. And so some of it is, you know, just conserving guys' legs. When you know you've got an isolated one-on-one, -on -one, quarterback doesn't have to think. This guy's getting it or this half of the field's getting it, and, and we have answers from there. So philosophically, sometimes you want the entire field to be involved. Sometimes you want to isolate, take – take some of those conversations and some of those reads away from uh, the quarterback and simplify things. And 
it's either inside outside run, inside outside check down, or it's isolate the entire field, give one guy a chance to win on a double move. All this is very similar to what we did a year ago, and and you know we just got to execute those things better. I think we did last year. We had guys that that uncovered themselves. We made some some really good 50-50 ball type plays. We had several 50-50 balls Saturday that that we didn't win on. Uh, we had several that we did, but we had several that we didn't, and we need to make sure those are incomplete passes or they're completions. We, we can't let them turn into turnovers. There were some instances where there was some hesitation from Logan as well. Um, what have you seen there? Is that uh, – what, what is the – what can cause that, really? A lot of things can – different look from the back end – uh, waiting on a receiver to make a decision based off of him having two or three options. A lot of what we do is let our wideouts get into open grass based off of how the coverage is played. When he's sitting on his back foot waiting on a guy to get in the window, he can't let it loose until he knows exactly what decision they've made. So are he going to run by the guy? Is he going to throw him by? Is he going to duck into open grass? So a lot of what he has to do is get to his position, sit on his back foot, wait for the route to declare, uh, wait for the route concept to declare, some of those ca cases may look like he's indecisive, but he can only do what he needs to when they commit to the route. So some of those may be just disguised coverages, waiting on routes to clear. Uh, indecision on a quarterback's part can be based off of a lot of different things. Sometimes the receiver making a decision, sometimes the route to develop. Um, you know, as we looked at it, he forced two throws early. After he came out of those two, knew what he did wrong, didn't make those same mistakes again, really threw the ball extremely well the rest of the game. Even the picks later in the game, those are 50-50 balls that we either have to catch or we need to break the play up. We need to get back to the line of scrimmage. Those are one-on-ones. And if we're going to push the ball downfield, we're going to be in some of those one-on-one -on -one situations with some 50-50 balls, and guys are going to have to either make the catch or defend the play and break it up so we can get back to the line of scrimmage. Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. Um, how, how impressive has Jaron Hall been for BYU, especially when you consider Romney hasn't played this season and Naku has played sparingly? Uh, I, I would say he's been somewhat flawless. I mean, I know they've got a loss on their record, and, and he may be frustrated about his play, but what he's done in terms of accuracy, the ability to move the pocket and extend plays, and then really to reach the wide side of the field so effectively, that's not something everybody can do. They run the ball extremely well, and that takes a tremendous amount of pressure. I mean, it doesn't really matter what running back they put on the field. They're effective at, at running the ball. Uh, but he he can reach every area of the field, and he can hurt you with his feet. He's a total package. We didn't see him a year ago. Uh, we're seeing him up close and personal this year, and he's playing at a you know, very, very high level. Brian Phillips, Big Blue USU Aggie News. Although it didn't result in a lot of huge yardage, uh, Brock Lane caught three passes yep. on three targets. Does that maybe mean or, or give you hope that perhaps you may get the tight end more involved in the next few weeks? Yeah, love to. Love to. We were shorthanded on Saturday. Uh, you know, he's getting his first reps, really hadn't played. He's been injured. We, we had high hopes for him before he got hurt. Thought he did a good job. He's a guy that that does spread the offense out a little bit for us and give us another weapon. Um, so, I mean, he's definitely a place that if we can find matchups, you know, like to see him get involved. Like to see really that whole room get more and more involved as we move forward. Kristen, I got another question of just about BYU. Uh, have they been really stingy defensively with the exception of the Oregon game? So what do you see from that uh, from that group that uh, allows them to be effective? Well, they're built really well up front. They're big. They play a lot of guys. I I'm not sure uh, what the total number it is, but it is it is definitely you, – you, you're playing a lot of people, keeping a lot of guys fresh. They've got linked out on the edges to play man coverage, which they will. They played a ton of man against us last year. But their ability to – play the run and slow the run down, obviously with the exception uh, of, of two really good rushing teams in Baylor and Oregon, they're still able to play the box with few numbers and commit guys out in space, which makes windows really, really hard to get into. We struggled to effectively run the ball against them last year at any point, only sparingly. We got going in the second half by hitting some windows in the back end and a couple explosive throws, but – Running the ball is very, very difficult because they are so 
big up front, so powerful and so long. They shed blocks well. They're able to play man coverage with that length. I mean, there's a challenge everywhere you look. Patrick Mayhorn again. You mentioned earlier this being, you know, an opportunity to beat BYU in, in what might be the last game you can play for a while. What are your thoughts on that, just in general? Well, it's a it's a great rivalry. I understand what's going on. I mean, I think we all saw this potentially coming with their move to the Big Twelve, but. Rivalry football is what college football is all about, in my opinion. I absolutely love it. Have not always been able to be a part of that, but some of my most uh, enjoyable experiences are these types of games. So I hate to see it go. I understand why it is. You'd like to think it'll come back around at some point that we'll able to be able to get it sorted out where this game comes back in the future. But for a while, this is going to be the last one. And I can't think of a better time to play our best ball and get a win than go down there and find a way to beat these guys. That's a huge challenge. They're a phenomenal football team. It would be it would be huge for us, and it would obviously give us a tremendous amount of momentum moving forward. But everybody will remember the last one, and uh, that that would be that's great motivation for our guys to play their very best. Clanson, once again, eleven penalties in the Weber State game. Eleven again uh, this past weekend. You talked about it. You voiced your frustration with the players on the field, but also your coaching staff. What's the what have those conversations been like addressing the discipline with your team? They probably weren't real fun for those on the receiving end. We've got to we got to show more composure. We uh, we had a great frenzied kind of environment, which is what we want. We we need that energy, uh, and, and it showed on the field and how physically we played with the energy level that we played with. But it's got to obviously we can't cross that line and start having um, I don't know emotional type penalties, frustration type penalties. We had way too much dialogue with an official. This particular crew had a couple of officials that were very talkative uh, back to our sideline, to our players, to our staff. Uh, you know, that's my job to talk to officials. And in this particular case, we didn't respond real well with uh, an official that was, you know, very, very vocal. Um, and, and our staff's got to do a better job. We can't ask our players to show composure if our, if our coaches don't. And, you know, just to me, we're, we're creating opportunities for, for our players to get the wrong message. So just, just being a transparent, man, we got to do better too from head coach down. And, and if, if I see coaches that are, that are screaming and, and, and getting in confrontations and, and arguing with officials, they need to be coaching our players. Let me handle that. So just feel like being transparent, man. Everywhere in our program, we need to do better. Our coaches can do the same as can I. And, and I think – the best way for us to uh, address it is to be open with it, go to work on it, and do better this week. Just a follow-up, this historically has been a, a game and a matchup that can get a little emotional with the Utah State and BYU, too. Yeah, there's no doubt it can. Rivalry games do. So we got to learn from last week. We cannot win this game with 11 penalties, especially, you know, it's one thing to have a, a in the course of play – Hand placement gets a little bad. You get a holding call. Hand placement, you know, your hands to the face. I mean, I get combative penalties. It's the unforced era, unsportsmanlike conduct where your emotions take the best of you. We cannot have it. We cannot put ourselves in a position to retaliate. We definitely can't instigate it. And that goes from head coach all the way down. We've got to stay composed. Play on the edge of out of control without crossing that line. We have struggled to find that line so far. Uh, we have crossed it two weeks in a row. We cannot continue to do that. If we do, we will, guys, we won't be very successful. I mean, it, the formula is out in the open for everybody. We know what we got to fix. We got to eliminate turnovers. We got to eliminate the penalties. We got to play mistake free football uh, with the same energy level that you saw this past week. Patrick Mayhorn again. It seemed like the passing game was working pretty well in the fourth quarter. What was, what was working there and why was that, uh, why was it so successful? You know, I, I think we, we opened things up a little bit. We 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 got to some concepts that we had gotten away from a little bit. We found a couple matchups that we liked that we had seen formationally earlier in the game. Guys made some great catches. I mean, some of those are contested catches that I mean the the, the catch that Terrell Ball makes in the end zone is one of the best catches we've seen in a long, long time. Uh, so a little bit of both. We got some plays that we probably need to lean on a little bit more in the future. We we protected and, and it really just got ourselves in open grass a little bit better than we did earlier. And a couple guys made phenomenal catches off, off of great throws, though. I thought we got better as the day went on. 
maybe a sense of urgency, maybe a sense of, of kind of playing two-minute style of offense. Uh, it, it, all those things kind of put us in a rhythm that helped us. Anything else, guys? Appreciate it. You got one? You got one more? I'll, I'll try to answer it for you. Okay, sorry. Uh, it just looked like Logan got pretty rocked at the end of the game there. Just yeah, he got hit pretty good. Did you see the linebacker come through? Hit him hit, hit him right in the chest. Pretty good shot. Um, as Logan has always done, the dude got back up and somehow finished, finished the game last play. I was ready to take him off, but uh, they blitzed the late backer, and the guy, I mean, just exploded him right there uh, as he was letting the ball go. Somehow able to finish the next play, get a ball thrown to the end zone. Uh, but that's that's kind of who Logan was all last year and has continued to be that through this injury and and getting us to this point. Does that help you? Thanks, Coach. Thanks. For Jason Turner from the Herald Journal, you guys are coming off your best defensive performance of the season, really did play well, stopped their rushing attack for the most part. Um, what what's it going to take to have a to enjoy a, a similar level of success against what's a what's a pretty diverse BYU offense? Uh, just keep finding uh, consistency in doing our assignments. I think in this past game there were a lot of instances where everything on defense clicked. The secondary did their job. The front did their job, and you know we experienced success. And then at other points, you know that inconsistency that we've been fighting all season kind of showed, and that led to. Longer drives, guys being out of position in either the pass or the run game, them being able to convert on third downs, which, you know, allowed them to get a couple of long touchdown drives. Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. And Coach talked about you know, uh, needing to shore up discipline, you know, 11 penalties against Weber State, 11 against uh, um, uh, UNLV again. What has that conversation been like, and what role do you play as a, as a leader on this team to help get the team dialed in a little better? Um, you know, that's something we've talked about the last couple of days, and to all the fans out there, you know, uh, you have a right to be embarrassed with the way we, uh, with our composure levels uh, last Saturday, you know, and as a leader on this team that falls directly on my shoulders, uh, not, you know, reining that in, not making that a bigger point of emphasis throughout just this entire cycle from winter workouts to spring ball to camp to now. Uh, but I promise you that going forward, that will not be an issue. We're handling that. And moving forward, you know, we look to just be a more composed team. Jake Ellis, Utah Statesman. What's the vibe in the locker room about this rivalry game? How bad do you guys want to win this? I mean, it's, it's a huge one. You know, last year they came in our house, beat us. Uh, this year, you know, despite everything that's happened so far, our mentality is move on to the next game, learn what we can learn from the previous ones. So, you know, we feel like at our best, we can hang with anybody on our schedule left or anyone left on our schedule. So, you know, we're going to this with the mentality of it's going to be a dogfight. Uh, they're obviously a good team. They've played a lot of good teams so far, been in competitive games, won competitive games. Uh, you know, offense, they have a big offensive line. They're physical. They're going to try and run the ball down our throats. So, you know, we're amped up. We're extremely excited just to go out there uh, and, you know, keep keep improving from last week. Hunter, Brian Phillips, Big Blue US, you have your news. You're going against a BYU team that kind of likes to spread the ball around. They've got five receivers with double-digit receptions, and they also really like to integrate the tight end. As a member of the secondary, how are you on the back end uh, preparing for a diverse passing attack like that? Just continue to work on our techniques, work on our fundamentals, uh, understand their scheme, understand how it relates to our scheme, and you know, just playing extremely hard when the ball's up in the air, being combative, as Coach Bond always says, fighting for it, you know, not giving up easy, easy completions to them and making them earn everything that they try to do. Well, Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. Um, just so you've been a part of this program for a while, part of this from the state, 
I mean, this rivalry, what does it mean to you and potentially having it go away for a little while? Yeah, you know, like you said, it's, it's, uh, you know, growing up here in Utah, um, been surrounded by a lot of BYU fans. Um, a lot of people in my neighborhood were BYU fans. I was always surrounded by BYU stuff growing up. Um, I have a lot of good friends that play for BYU right now. And then obviously when you get here to Utah State and play ball, it turns into, you know, it's just, it's a full-blown rivalry here. So um, it's an exciting game. It's a fun game to be able to play against some of the guys that you've competed against your entire life or trained with. Um, my buddy Braden Kime plays online there. I went to high school with him, uh, Ben Bywater, a uh, phenomenal linebacker for them, um, trained with him in high school. So I just, there's a lot of guys I know on that team that I've competed against in football and basketball growing up. So it's, it's a fun game, you know, it's a game. Uh, you definitely try to take some pride in it for sure. Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. Uh, they've been, you know, with the excessive, exception of the Oregon game, they've defended the run really well this year. Even against Baylor, they did a pretty, pretty good job. And that's a very veteran offensive line, Baylor. Um, so, what, what's the biggest key to being able to establish a, a rushing attack against uh, against those guys? Just making sure everybody's on the same page, pre-snap, making sure our IDs are right. Um, we're playing with good technique, uh, playing with controlled aggression. Um, and getting to the guys that we need to get to and just staying within staying within the bounds of the game, playing with proper technique. And at the end of the day, just coming and playing nasty with an attitude, um, try to set the tone with the run game this week. Coach talked about discipline. Uh, being an issue with the team, you know, 11 penalties against Weber State and 11 more against uh, UNLV. What have those conversations been like and what do you feel like your role is to help get your team dialed in and more composed? Uh, I mean, yeah, fact of the matter is right now, I don't think we're a very disciplined football team. Um, and that's something that, that we're going to continue to work on moving forward. Um, I think th the one thing that Coach Anderson preaches is is right on the edge of out of control, playing with fanatic effort, but not being out of control in a way that's going to cost or hurt the team. And uh, I mean, clearly we didn't do a good job of that last week. So that's a huge focus this upcoming week too, is just to be to be disciplined. Like I was mentioning earlier, staying in the bounds of the game. Um, and I, for me personally, I feel like, you know, it's to be able to, to I guess, minimize those you know, those penalties, it's just, you have to, you have to lead by example. Um, you have to hold guys accountable when they get out of place or when they're starting to get out, you know, uh, when, they're, when they're not acting within their character or within the character of the team, uh, getting on those guys, telling them, hey, you know, that's not okay, we can't do that. Um, I think just important to hold everybody accountable, play with fanatic effort, but not on the edge, uh, right on the edge, out of control, but not out of control. Hey, Jake Ellis, Utah State's in. Um, what does a short week do to change your preparation? Obviously, it doesn't seem like you have much time to dwell on Saturday. Yeah, no, not a lot of time to dwell on Saturday. Uh, we're going to flush it, move on, look forward to this week. we got a huge challenge this week. Uh, BYU is a phenomenal opponent. Um, really is not a weak spot on their team. Um, a lot of great players um, run a great stream, uh, great scheme, great coaches. Um, it's going to be a huge challenge for us this upcoming week. Just the focus is everybody getting our bodies healthy, having another great week of practice, getting in the film room extra, and uh, just putting our mind forward to, to Thursday. So Brian Phillips, Big Blue USU Aggie News. One thing that you guys, as an offensive line, uh, took pride in last season was uh, your peak physical condition and being able to wear down opposing defenses, defensive lines, um, once we got on the second half and into the fourth quarter. Do you feel like you're at that level um, 
in 2022? Uh, yeah, I do. I feel like we are at that level. Um, I think in order also in order to put yourself in a position to be able to run guys down in the third and fourth quarter, you have to get, you know, you have to be effective on first and second down. You got to get first downs rolling. You got to get the chains moving. Once you get the chains moving um, and you get the pace offense going, I think that's when I think we're, I mean, we're in better shape than, than, uh, than teams we play when it comes to those scenarios, when we get rolling down the field, obviously that's something that takes some time to build up. Um, you know, playing in a game is completely different and playing in practice and the, and the pace and the speed of it. Um, but I feel like I feel like we are at that same level this year. And we're going to continue to push hard and condition ourselves in practice so we can take advantage of tired defense the, at uh, those points of the game. Anything else for Chandler? Okay, that'll do it for today. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.